All right, everyone. Hello. My name is Corey Dowles. I the Veda. I'm an astrologer. Back to talk about this is a series of videos on the the uh, Rashi's of Jyotish. Rashi is the word for sign in, in Vedic astrology. So the zodiac signs from the angle of Vedic astrology. We're looking at the text of Brihat Prasha Hora Shastra. We're reading that, getting a little commentary on it, and then I show some examples. So to start off with. You guys already should know the basics, so I'm not going to get too fundamental, but Sag is ruled by Jupiter. So it's Jupiter is a plan of wisdom. Guru is his name in Sanskrit. Many people think, well, it's not untrue. Guru, one definition is Gu and Ru, the, the thing that takes you from the darkness and into the light. Those two words mean light and dark. But Guru as one word actually means heavy. And this is what is very not well known for some reason, at least in yoga tradition world. But all Vedic astrologers know it this way because, of course, Guru is heavy. Guru is Jupiter. Jupiter is the heaviest planet in the solar system. Duh. How the ancient Rishis knew that Jupiter would be the heaviest planet in the solar system and were somehow able to name it that, literally the word heavy, Guru, that's pretty amazing. And the fact that the sun is not influenced by any other planet except Jupiter is very telling. The sun has a very center or a little bit of a shift of its movement as a result of Jupiter, as Jupiter is moving around. As above, so below. As below, so above. In the same way as this happens, in the same way the king, the, the leader, the higher self, the soul, will be influenced by Jupiter, the guru, the wisdom, the sage, and that will help it slightly shift it into the right trajectory when it's confused. So that's really Jupiter's job, is to be an advisor, to give wisdom, to uh, be devoted to works of wisdom and truth, and to have goodness flowing through one. And the signs ruled by Jupiter are Sagittarius and Pisces. So these are two of the most wisdom-oriented signs. So now I hope that's very clear. Um, okay, now let's go over what Prashra says about this sign of Sagittarius. All right, so Sagittarius, Donis, the bow, Rashi. So Prashras describes it as back rising is the bow owned by Jupiter. Sattvic, yellow, vigorous at night, fiery, a kshatriya, two-footed at the beginning, four-footed at the end, regular limbed, bearing a bow, standing in the east, moving on the ground, and made splendid by Brahma. So yeah, back rising is the bow owned by Jupiter. So that's really cool. So um, it's the bow owned by Jupiter, the bow man, you know? So that symbolizes having a vision, aiming, having a purpose. That's what Jupiter gives you, a sense of Dharma, a sense of purpose to your life to be one foot, one pointed. Um, and it's sattvic. Well, sattva is the guna of following the inspiration and following your sense of purpose. That makes sense yellow well that's kind of funny because we 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 describe it as yellow uh that word pingala is um you know the the color thing is just tricky because in ancient times there were only like a few colors that were very common um and now we have a lot more colors so along with yellow i actually would say orange is the most accurate color for sagittarius um, orange, burnt orange, but all kinds of autumny, auburny, yellowish, orangish colors with a little bit of red too, maybe because it's a fire sign. Um, and it's vigorous at night, uh, fiery, uh, obviously, um, a kshatriya, just like all the other fire signs. So it's, it's focused on knowing right from wrong and doing the right thing and being warrior-like, having principles and ethics that guide it. Two-footed at the beginning. This is really interesting. First 15 degrees of Sag is two-footed. This is where the actual vision comes, the, the, the archer getting the vision, the human biped part of it. The second half, four-footed, is the horse that, is, that, the, that the archer is on. Uh, I talk a lot about this in my book that's coming up. 
um, literally I spent 30 pages on each of the signs. Um, and there are two whole chapters devoted to both sides of Sagittarius, the first 15 degrees, the biped portion, I write like 10 or 15 pages just on that. And then 10 or 15 pages just on that. There is a lot I could go and do here just buy my book though, right? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you all that for free because then you wouldn't buy my book. So I'm going to leave that off, but that's very significant. Regular limbed, um, meaning like medium bodied. We've talked about that already. Bearing a bow. So he's the one bearing a bow. Bear, the only son bearing a weapon. You don't go to war unless you have a real purpose, a real meaning, unless you even feel like God or your religion or your sense of everything is behind that war or that purpose, you see? So that's why Sage is the son of bearing a bow, bearing a weapon. Um, standing in the East. Um, all fire signs do that. Um, moving on the ground because um, it's, it's, a, it's a horse, it's a man on a horse, so it's about moving on the ground and roaming and wide open spaces. And we, I talk about all the environments it rules in my environments course, so watch that. That's still for free on YouTube. Maybe one day I'll charge you guys for it, so if you can watch it now, you should. Um, and then moving on the ground and then um, and made splendid by Brahmaha to show how sattvic it is, to show how it is that sign of seeing the truth and the splendid truth of creation. So that is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the sign of the guru, the sage, the teacher, the, the, the guide, you know? So I hope that helps you guys understand it. Now let's look at a few examples. So now we're looking at examples of Sagittarius. This is the chart of Eckhart Tolle. Um, he was a guy who got self-realized, just a normal dude. Supposedly he got self-realized sitting on a park bench um, in New York or something like that. His self-realization does appear to be quite legitimate, just from people who have interacted with him, people who have spoken to him and stuff. Um, and he does have a very strong Jupiter in the seventh house. So he has a Mahapurusha yoga. I'm not saying this guy is like, his chart shows that he's like God realized or like a perfect master or someone, but he's definitely probably had some sincere, you know, degree of, um, of awakening. I would think with that Jupiter Rashi aspecting all his angles of his chart and, um, uh, you know, he has played a role as a role as a guru and that Jupiter is in a Mahapurusha yoga um, he, he also, if you look at his Navamsha chart, if you can see that his Atmakarika Mars is in Sagittarius. So he's a Sagittarius Swamsha, which is important. Um, and that can be a sign of having falls from heights. He might've had a fall from a height or he might have one in the future at some point. Um, but it's, it's definitely a sign of being a teacher and a, and a guy and stuff. And he has played that role. So this is a chart of Jean Lafitte. This is a famous pirate. So we have to understand that Jupiter doesn't care as much about worldly laws as people think. Jupiter cares about God's laws. Mercury is the planet of worldly laws and worldly rules and wor the world, the earth element. Mercury rules the earth. Jupiter rules the ether, heaven, space, sky, ideals, intuition, um, ideas, invisible things. You see that that are not necessarily needing to be tangible, you know? Um, so you'll actually find really strong Jupiter people not always being like this guru person. So I wanted to mention that they're actually going to be a person who's still bringing a lot of goodness into the world on some level, unless like it's with K2, um, it can make it a little bit weirder, but in general, yeah, you see that. So this guy was a pirate, but he actually was a, um, a really noble pirate, believe it or not. And he was really good. And he actually, uh, like, <laughs> like he was kind of uh more more skillful at bringing peace to like the a lot of areas of the united states during the various wars like this the um i forget which war he was in right now maybe it was like the war of 1812 or the uh oh man one of those more obscure wars and or maybe it was even the revolutionary war where he was he would basically fight on the side of the the, the british and then fight on the side of the americans the colonialists and he would kind of always be going in different places and and switching around and which is also seen because his ruling planet mars is in gemini 
and Lord of Gemini and Mercury is in Aries. So there's an interchange between the first and third. So a life of travel, a pirate life, you know, um, but that, uh, and you know, Venus exalted Venus being the planet of, of the, the water element and sailing, um, according to Gemini, um, Jupiter is, uh, is in there though. And he was really, he did have a lot of luck. He was extremely lucky as a pirate and he pretty much like cr controlled like a whole army and, and all at points in his life. But he was actually considered to be like very, very noble and wise and like the, the ideal pirate leader if you were going to have one, right? Um, him. This is George R. Martin. So this is the guy who wrote the Game of Thrones stories. I talked about him in Virgo. He's, he's got a very like, well, with K2 and Scorpio, with Mars there, you're makes one way too focused on the Scorpio side of life and not seeing the beautiful Taurus side. So his stories are like way too dark. I have not read his books. I'm not re advocating you read them. But amongst all the worldly people, Game of Thrones actually has a lot more like wisdom and truth uh, and things behind it than a lot of other fantasy stuff or a lot of other hbo tv shows you would watch you know what i mean game of thrones actually does have a lot of like morals a lot of like like it's not it, you know i don't know how to put it but it has it has a lot of wisdom in it and george R. R. martin's big purpose of writing that was to make people see how ugly war was like whereas when he grew up reading the lord of the rings or other stories war seemed so much more like noble and like genuine and and beautiful and and like this like you know this divine thing and we can see that he would understand that side of it with the Jupiter and Sag, but with Mars and K2 and Scorpio and with Sun Saturn uh, starving each other, he has a very darker, you know, it's just kind of a, a, a critical, negative, uh, afflicted Virgo outlook on a lot of things in life. Um, so he takes things like and makes things like so much more negative and dark than they need to be. But somehow he still like um, created like made this whole world, and that's the thing is that his world building is like really admirable. Like he has created, he truly has created like these whole worlds. And Jupiter is your creativity, and Jupiter also is the plan of being an author, like the best author according to Jaimini. Um, and when you have Jupiter and Moon in the first and fifth. That is a classic Jaimini placement for being an author, and he has that. Now, this is the chart of Ramdas. So Ramdas uh, was a very popular kind of guru in the 60s and 70s and still is, and he suffered a stroke, but he's still alive. He's still hanging in there, probably because of that exalted Jupiter on his ascendant. But you'll notice that he also has his moon in Sagittarius. So he has his natural, his moon, your natural kind of self, and it's also his ruling planet because he's ruled by the moon. He's a cancer. So that's in Sag, and it's in a complete aspect, like a perfect, pretty much perfect aspect um, with Venus, that exalted Venus in the ninth, also speaking to being a guru and a guide. And this is an interchange between, you know, moon and Jupiter interchanging signs. Um, so he has a lot of Sagittarius qualities going on in his life. And he has been an important guru, an important figure. But notice that this is a first and sixth house interchange, which is said to be a Danya yoga or a misery causing yoga. And that might have to do with why he had that stroke and all that stuff, because it, the sixth house has to do with health issues. But I don't know, I'm sure there's a lot of other things going involved in order to have that. A lot, you know, that's one factor I see. And then, um, one more final example. This is the chart of Edward Snowden. We looked at him before um, with the Gemini sign. And, you know, this is also a guy who felt very, very, if, if what he said is genuine, you know, if, if his uh, testimony is genuine, then he saw that the NSA was doing surveillance on the whole country and was not saying that they were. And he felt that that was wrong. Jupiter ethics, you know, any Jupiter K2 makes you very, very, like, very intense with that. And, you know, he, uh, he kind of was a whistleblower and made his whole life. Uh, uh, the re only reason we know about him is because of that, that ethical Jupiter that stepped in and was like, wait, something's wrong here with my other party, this, the people, the Pentagon, whoever I'm working with, and I need to speak out about it. Um, so that's kind of interesting too. And, and I guess in a way he's also playing a role as a guide or, or a 
teacher or something on, on some other level. So that gives you a feel for Sagittarius. If I forgot to mention anything, let me know. If you got any questions about the, the way that the Sagittarius energy works, let me know. Ariom.